So guys, uh, this is a capstone project, a similar case study. Okay, this is a prep fund part three. So in the earlier two days, so prep fund part one, part two, that is a completed, right? So this is a total waterfall project, guys. So two parts is completed. Now you are coming to like a prep fund part three. Okay. So. So we are giving that case study. Okay, so that same case study, we are giving that similar case study. So, Mr. Anthony, he is in a prosperous NRI, right? So, he is in a non residence in India. He want to uh, build a, like, a website. Okay, he devoted to that fashion industry, guys. So, in his website, so you can sell uh, and buy the high apparels and uh, accessories. So, nothing but like in a clothes and uh, like... Uh, uh, accessories, you know, like bills, watch or something like that. Okay. So he want to sell some products, sir. nothing but like an you know, appearance and accessories, guys. So he want to, uh, he has to collaborate on that application, Mr. Uh, Baskar and Miss Kathy and Miss Tony. Okay. So these people, uh, they just collaborate with that, nothing but like a meeting type. Okay. But just, uh, they discuss about that application, just they collaborate all persons. Okay. Uh, the website uh, should be easy to navigate. That main motto of that, uh, that collaboration meeting is, so they're discussing. Okay. That main motto is to uh, easy to navigate that application. That is uh, one of the thing and have to a uh, contemporary look. That is nothing but like a high level look. Okay. And to process the payments quickly. So he wants to ask these payments quickly also. So the three things are uh, very important for that application. Okay. So upon looking the uh, at that papers so that Mr. Uh, Anthony has uh, understood actually that already that Miss uh, Miss Kathy has in a similar application will be there, but uh, as the sales are decl uh, discriminatory declining. Okay. So that's why uh, that Mr. Anthony has taken uh, on the duty to improve that application. Okay, so the timeline of the project is 18 months with as one crore of the budget, guys. One crore budget and 18 months of that uh, project timeline. Let me. So that uh, he just, uh, uh, Miss Kathy is there, right? So he's facing some problems. The current problems are that we are discussing here. The lack of knowledge of fashion of the customers. That, that is a, one of the uh, main problem. Okay, and that lack of customers reach so that is a one of the big problem okay so this type of problems uh, miss kathy faced okay looking to that current problem mr anthony has to team pulled to on that board so that team is nothing but like an so here you can see that mr anthony company is nova corporated on site team okay that on site team like nothing but like uh, mr philip uh, he is in a project head Mr. Walter White, he's in a committee member and some committee members also will be there, guys. Uh, Miss Ruby and uh, Mrs. Trina, they're also committee members. Okay. And Mr. Anthony outsourced this project to be company named is a I don't know. Okay. And uh, Mr. John is a delivery head and Miss Anna is a uh, project manager. Okay. Mr. Chase is a, uh, Chase is a uh, senior developer. And uh, Miss Nora is a Java developer and Sushank and uh, Vivina. So these are all the developers, guys. Okay, these are all the Java developers. Okay. And Mr. Mike, <coughs> just a second. <coughs> okay, uh, Mr. Mike is nothing but like a uh, network admin. And Mr. John is a database admin. And Mr. Uh, Jason is nothing under. Miss uh, Neff is nothing but a both are testers, guys. Okay, Be, uh, these both are testers, and you are the business analyst. Okay, so you are the business analyst. So these are all that. Uh... Guys, please mute yourself. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, stakeholders, project stakeholders we are giving here. Okay. So, so after that, definitely, if any case study will come, definitely you do that decode of that case study, guys. Then only we got some idea. Okay. The project idea. So, first of all, we want to see that project idea to build a website, guys, to develop a website 
uh, devoted to that fashion industry. So he has uh, some idea about of that, right? So just a second, yeah. So uh, develop that website to fashion uh, with a uh, focus on high-end apparels and the accessories, guys. Okay, so this is the project idea. And what are the current needs to easy to navigate? That is a main motto of that uh, in that earlier we are discussing, right? So the current needs to easy to navigate, nothing but like a uh, friendly user to navigate at uh, each page screens, okay? That is a, one of the thing. And have a contemporary look. So it is nothing but like a high level look, okay? And the process payments also quickly because they're doing like an international payments and everything, right? So he want to ask that process payments are quickly. So these are all the current needs of that application. Okay. Overview of the projects. It is an e-commerce based project, guys. So is there any existing application present? But that current project would be like to take that inputs from the current one. Okay. And work on that new one. Already that uh, current one project is there, right? They take that inputs from that one and uh, work on that new one. Okay. And the current problems are declining on the sales okay non user friendly and unable to handle that compensation and everything that is the current problems they are facing so we know the team and everything so we need to start the project okay so you are the business analyst right so uh, in this case study we are giving some questions guys please mute yourself okay now you can see that questions so uh, this type of questions you need to write that one Uh, Vijay Akash Agarwal, please mute yourself. I'm recording that session. Yeah. So you need to write that uh, questions, guys, regarding this uh, case study. We are giving some um, questions also. So um, write that 20 functional requirements. Okay. Write a 20 functional requirements. So whatever we gather the business requirements, right? So based on that business requirements, we uh, write that functional and non-functional requirements. Okay. So that functional requirements defines that specific behaviors, functions, and uh, some operations of that particular system that we call it as a functional requirements. And the non-functional requirements is nothing but like a, it's a performance of that system, guys. Okay. So this is the functional requirements. So you need to write that uh, requirement ID. <coughs> Just a second, guys. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Uh, so now you can see that functional requirement. This is the first question, right? So the functional requirements are defined specific behaviors, okay? And the functions and operations of that system that we call it as in a functional requirements. And that non-functional requirements is a performance of that system, okay? Performance of that application. We call it as in a uh, non-functional requirements, okay? So here we uh, we are giving like, a, this is the way you need to prepare that requirements, guys. If each requirement we are giving like a unique IDs, right? So that's why we are giving that a requirement ID, requirement name and requirement description, okay? So for example, that user registration. So that is a one of that functional requirement. So you need to describe that a particular requirement, okay? And that search uh, for that products, that is a one of the function. Add to card, so that is a functional. So the, uh, this type of things to undergo that particular functional requirements, okay? So you need to write that 20 functional requirements, guys, okay? So... Now you can see, 
So what is the functional requirements? So uh, sorry, non-functional requirements. Non-functional requirements will be described the quality and attributes of the system, focusing on that uh, performance of that uh, particular system. Okay. So this week, uh, this uh, this type of things uh, we call it as non-functional requirements. So now we are giving some examples of that non-functional requirements: performance, security, compatibility, something like that. Okay, so you need to write that uh, non-functional requirements of that uh, first question, guys. Okay, you need to write that functional requirements and non-functional requirements. 20, guys. You need to write the 20 functional requirements and non-functional requirements. Both. Okay. So this is the first question. And coming to that second question, prepare uh, by five wireframes, guys. Okay, you need to prepare that five wireframes. So... We know oh, by using that balsamic, okay, we need to prepare that wireframes or mockups, okay? So you need to prepare the five-page designs, guys. Wireframes or mockups or prototypes. We have enough, three things will be there, okay? So you need to prepare that five wireframes here in that second question by using the balsamic, okay? Or otherwise, you want to use the, to prepare the prototypes. That is your wish. You need to prepare that one. Okay, so but you need to prepare the five page designs. Okay, so this is the way. Uh, so guys, one more thing here. So whatever you prepare that page designs which is given to that development team or a UX team. Okay, so then only they will build that particular uh, uh, project. Okay, whatever we are giving that page designs, that page designs only they are uh, preparing uh, to coding and everything. They prepare that website. Okay, so you need to prepare uh, this uh, page designs. Okay, so please prepare a uh, well book. Okay, so here you can see we are giving some example also product review, something like we are giving that a uh, search and uh, login. This is the type of you need to prepare that wireframes, guys. This is sample purpose we are giving to you, but uh, you need to prepare that page designs. Okay. So the next question is the write that 50 words of the tools you are aware of this project, guys. MS Visual Balls, Make Issue. Okay. This type of tools you need to explain here. Okay. So by using that MS Visual, we need to this is a nothing but like a graphics application, right? Graphical application. So we create like any flow charts, visible presentations, like use case diagrams, activity diagrams. Okay, gangs are also we need to prepare in this by using the MS Visual. This type of things, lot of diagrams we need to uh, draw in this MS Visual by using the MS Visual guys, or class diagrams. Lot of things we need to prepare by using the MS Visual. Okay, so that is a one of the important uh, use of the MS Visual. And uh, we need to uh, use that balsamic condition. Uh, balsamic is a uh, rapid wireframing tool. This is a low fidelity will be there, okay? To create that uh, mockups and prototypes for that user interface. But we have uh, some differences will be there that balsamic and Azure, guys. So Azure is an advanced uh, prototyping tool, okay? But that uh, balsamic have an, uh, if you are doing like any page navigations, okay, we can do it through that balsamic. But in that Azure, we can do that validations also in the prototypes. Okay. That is a very big advantage. <clears throat> that is a Yeah, sorry guys. So that is the difference between that Balsmic and Azure, guys. So Balsmic is nothing but to with say. Uh, uh, rapid uh, wireframing tool, okay? And this is a low fidelity, guys. But that Azure, it's a more advanced prototyping tool we can uh, prepare here, okay? This is a high fidelity to interact with that wireframes and whatever the prototypes to that uh, web and mobile applications. It's looking like a uh, real-time applications, whatever we're preparing that Azure, okay? And we do that uh, page navigations and validations also we can do in, in uh, through that uh, particular Azure. So that is a big advantage. So this is the differences between that particular uh, tools, guys. So you need to prepare, uh, the, uh, write the uh, three questions, the three tools, okay?
So the fourth question is prepare that RTM guys. Okay, RTM is a requirement traceability matrix. So here that all requirements, uh, whatever we are uh, right, that all requirements, right? We just uh, track those requirements. So here you can see we are giving that requirement ID, requirement name, and description. So whatever that requirements, all that functional requirements we are writing here, functional non-functional requirements. So every day that progress will be updated here regularly. Okay, in this RTM. So if the design phase is completed, you need to mention that completed. Otherwise, you need to mention like an incomplete or work in progress, something like that. Okay, you need to uh, provide this type of answers here. But in the real time, related that requirement, for example, uh, user registration will be there. Related that a design phase, whatever they're preparing the designs or related the documents, we need to keep in this design phase here. Okay, so regularly we are updating whatever that related design or coding phase, okay, unit testing phase, that related documents or page designs or something. In that design phase, we need to uh, provide like a related uh, diagrams or uh, page designs. We need to, uh, documents we need to uh, mention here. In that coding, they're providing some links and everything, right? Each phase there uh, regularly, we updated that related requirement, okay? So uh, regularly we updated, right? We send to that client also. He also tracked the progress and everything. So tracking purpose we need to uh, maintain like a rtm for in this building projects also it is very helpful to us so they release that funds and everything right so rtm along with that uh, time sheets okay we send to that client then only he release the funds and everything so this is the tracking purpose how it will be work on that project and everything so tracking purpose we are preparing the rtm so come some companies they're using some tools also but uh, you should uh, here we are using like an excel sheet Okay, Excel sheet or Google sheet, you can explain. Okay, you have any idea about of the thing. Okay, so this is the thing, guys. Here, for the data. So you need to prepare in this uh, in this way only. Okay. So the next thing is in prepare ten test case documents, guys. Test case documents. A test case documents. It's a whatever we are preparing uh, that uh uh. Uh, built in a website right you need to uh, do the testing definitely so that purpose we are preparing a test case documents so some companies they're using like any some tools also for this uh, to maintain like uh, some tools to that are testing purpose so here we are giving some one uh, template guys okay so this is the way you need to prepare that uh, test case documents okay you need to prepare the 10 test case documents here we are giving like a test case ID, project ID, project uh, manager ID, okay, test strategy, test plan ID, something. We are giving a lot of things, okay. You need to fill this one. So in the same only you can prepare that uh, uh, test case document, okay. And uh, one more thing here, a test case scenarios will prepare that uh, business analyst guys. And one more thing, test cases, uh, test cases will prepare only the testers, okay. Test cases only prepare the test test. Test case scenarios will prepare the business analyst. Okay. So you need to prepare the test case documents, guys. And here you can see that uh, test cases also you need to prepare under the input, uh, expected behavior also, actual behavior also, comments and results, pay, uh, pass or fail. So you need to mention this. Okay. You need to prepare the 10 test case documents here. Okay. This is the fifth question, guys. And the next one is the draw database schema and uh, edit a relationship diagram. Okay, you need to prepare that both things. Uh, first of all, database. Database is nothing but like a storage, guys. Okay, this is nothing but like a storage database. So database schema is a blueprint, okay? So whatever uh, the structure of the database, uh, including all the tables, fields, relationships, constraints, okay? And other characteristics is nothing but like in a database schema, okay? So, but uh, the way of explanation also, you need to improvise here. So if any person, they will ask you database schema, you need to explain in depth of things, okay? Don't give like a high level answers. How to give the relationship between the tables, Okay, one entity to another entity. Okay, and you need to prepare that uh, entity relationship diagram also. Okay, that visual <clears throat> that visual representation of the relationship between that entities in a database. Okay, 
uh, so i will give you some things uh, entities means is nothing but like an uh, as a table okay and attributes are the properties of the field and relationship between them that we call it as an entity relationship so i will give you the database schema first of all yeah now you can see the database schema i think uh, i think you are able to see my screen am i right guys it is visible to you right uh, Oh, guys, I'm audible to you. Yeah, thank you. So this is the database schema, guys. This is the way you need to prepare the database schema. Okay. So we are give, we are taking some lot of tables right here. So this is the lot of tables, product table, product category, and the product inventory. So, lot of tables uh, we are taking here, okay? Uh, in a, uh, that a product is nothing but like a one entity. Product category is a one of the entity. And uh, product inventory, that is a one of the entity. Lot of tables, right? We call this an entities. But uh, here the product ID, name, uh, something description, these are all under like a, it's a attributes, okay? This is all the attributes. So whatever give that relationship between the tables. So by using the primary key and foreign key, we are giving that particular uh, relationship between the tables, guys. That we call it as in it? all the tables and all the relationships, okay? And the characteristics and everything, we call it as in a database schema. So you need to prepare in this way only, okay? So that SQL uh, session, it will be clearly explained, okay? Just watch once that SQL also, what I'm telling here. Okay, so simple lot of the uh, tables we are giving, right? So by using the primary key, so unique IDs. And primary keys, each table we are giving one uh, primary keys, right? So it will be acting as in a foreign key in another table. Here the product category is an ID is in uh, primary key, right? In this product table, it will be acting as in a, here you can see category ID, okay? That we call it as in a reference key here in this table. So here that is a primary key, but in this uh, in this another table, it will be acting as in a foreign key that we call it as in a uh, relationship between that one table to another table uh, uh, using that attributes and everything. Okay, so that we call this we call as in a uh, relationship between the tables. Okay, all the tables plus relationship we call it as in a database schema. So this is the thing here, guys. So you need to prepare uh, this database schema. Okay. You need to prepare that database schema, guys. Okay. The next question is to uh, data flow diagram. So a data flow diagram means it's a graphical representation of the flow of the data within that system. How it will be flow in that system. We need to give that uh, one diagram also. Yeah, now you can see that user. Okay. So whatever that user, we are giving some data, right? It will be go to that particular, uh, we just uh, search that item. We just search and it will go to that database, okay? That particular uh, item uh, list, it will be go, okay? And again, it will be showing some uh, and back to that uh, page and it will be showing some search of uh, such items. So, and again, you can see that user. And again, after that, you do that registration, okay? So registration page, it will be go. And again, it will be go to that uh, uh, user must. And it will be nothing but like it will be go to that database particular table. Okay. And it will be see that table and everything and it back to that particular user issue. So this is the how it will be flows. Okay. You need to prepare this uh, data flow diagram. This is the flow of the diagram, right? Just you need to um, draw this data flow diagram, guys, for that seventh question. Okay. So the next one is the how should be a handle change request. So first of all, see the change request. What is a change request? If any request will come, if any changes will be there on a particular change request, whatever like client side also, security purpose also, security side also, we got a some change request and third party also, we got a some change request. Okay. If any, uh, if any, uh, this uh, type of things will happen, okay, they will give you some change request, guys not only that client, okay? So first of all, if we got any change request, okay? How to handle the change request, you need to write this one and explain that uh, evolution also, guys. 
So first of all, understand the scope of the change request and to the and uh, document the change request. Do that impact analysis. And one more thing, the uh, scope of the project and the schedule. I mean, like a timeline and budget resources wise. And if any uh, risks, uh, if any risk will come, or if any gaps will be there, uh, if uh, you are accepting a change request, uh, a change request, if any gaps will be there, okay, uh, if any gaps could be solved, okay, this type of things, a lot of things we are just uh, analyzing in that uh, uh, impact analysis, okay, and after that, uh, prioritize changes request, okay, prioritize basis also urgency, importance, and impact of the project, then definitely we are accepting that one. Okay, seek approvals from that uh, project sponsor of the change request and we have a uh, change control board committee also will be there to communicate the change request and its potential impacts to all uh, relevant stakeholders including the project team. So whatever that all that uh, all are discussing about that one, we send to the change control board, that control board also all discussing about the change request and everything, they are also analyzing once and after that they are accepting the change request. So this is the format guys. So once it is okay, then we just immediately do that particular design and everything, that particular uh, change request, okay? We just see that a priority of that particular request also, guys. And the next question is, uh, what is the difference between particular uh, change request and enhancement, okay? Here, uh, you just read that question, guys. Okay, now uh, I want to explain uh, the differences of that enhancement and change request. So, enhancement is nothing but like an, uh, um, that existing application will be there. Okay, for example, if any existing application will be there, um, for example, I-14 will be there, guys. Okay, I-14 will be there, but uh, after that, they're enhancing the product and they're releasing like a new product. Nothing but like an, I um i50 right so they're enhancing the product and they're releasing the new version or new product so that is the one of that enhancement uh recently now we are uh nowadays we are seeing like a whatsapp okay so a lot of changes will be there in that uh in that earlier there is no enhancement they're not doing now they're doing a lot of enhancement uh they're adding metadata something like that a lot of changes will be there right so they're enhancing the product okay that is nothing but like an enhancement. So, for example, that change request. So, while we are working on that application, so we got some change request. For example, um, I will give you one a good example here. Okay, mm, uh, in the pandemic situation, after after that, uh, I think before and after, I don't know. I forgot that one. So, that uh, government will uh, um. Um, whatever that notes they are releasing, like two thousand notes and everything, right? Two thousand eight or notes and two hundred notes, something like that. But here, that uh, particular uh, in that ATM will uh, give that to five hundred notes and hundred notes and thousand notes, maybe. So, but these two thousand notes and two hundred notes they are not accepting. But already the request will be there. Uh, but uh, that government uh, suddenly they change the policies and everything, right? Uh, so that's why. He on uh, that uh they just change that request here already the request will be there whatever that uh, requirement will be there now the once the government announced to release that new notes also they also one of the change request here after that they uh, change that request and everything so they are accepting the two thousand notes and two hundred notes okay in that ATM and everything so that is a one of the change request okay. This is nothing but like a change request and enhancement, guys. So you need to give that examples of that uh, in your own way. Okay. Now I'm giving you the two examples. Okay. So the next one is that uh, how many man hours are required for the project, guys? Okay. So if any projects, uh, we have three types of projects, like a small and medium and large. Okay. Up to man hours, like up to 500 uh, man hours uh, for that small project, guys. And the medium project up to 1000 hours that is required for that and large project up to 1500 man hours we need to require for that particular project guys okay so analysis uh, as per that case study uh the duration of that project is 18 months right and that current size of the around like 15 members uh this will be come under this medium project okay um so that's why i'm selecting for that medium project as the trainer resources are available uh 
trainers are required for this project. So as a structure of the project is available, new and enhanced that infrastructure is required. So for this is an 18 months of project, right? So that the team size is 15 members of the working in this particular project, guys. Okay. So for this project, we need to up to thousand hours, thousand man hours are required because it is a 15 month, uh, 15 members are right. So that's why uh, we are selected that this is a medium project. So it's a thousand man hours are required for this particular project. Okay. So now you can see that uh, UAT process, guys. So UAT process, user acceptance test. Okay, user acceptance testing. So first of all, we need to plan that particular UAT process, guys. Okay, this is the first step to plan that UAT process. So whatever that uh, uh, particular test case is, that everything we need to prepare each and everything. Okay, we just each and everything. We just need to prepare all those things and uh, implement that UAT testing for every feature. Okay, whatever we are preparing, each and uh, each and every feature. Okay, need to test and the minimum the standards for the acceptance of the test acceptance criteria, right? So you need to test each and everything, guys. Here, each whatever we build, each and everything. Okay, so we need to test that particular uh, features and everything. Okay, and that design. Here the test cases are designed to hide all the responsibilities of software packages in that real world environment. So, so whatever we are preparing that the test uh, test cases and everything, test case documents and everything will be there, right? So each feature, okay, small, small things also we need to uh, do the testing and here, guys. And that UAT testers. So, for example, like uh, actually, guys, here uh, that a client uh, side a QA team, quality assurance team, they're doing like a UAT testing, user acceptance testing. They're acting like an, they're acting as a end users. They are doing like a UAT testing, guys. QA team. So, for example, if the client said uh, there is no QA team is there, okay. So, so that time only that our testers only uh, acting as a uh, end users and they're doing like a UAT testing, guys. Here. Yeah. Okay, here if any uh, bugs are there uh, finding, okay, if any uh, bugs are there finding in this UAT uh, testing, so whatever they uh, find that bugs and everything, they are preparing their list, okay, and after that we send to that particular development, okay, priority base is the development team uh, just fix their bugs and everything, and uh, whatever that software is an error free, then only they do with that uh, sign offs and everything, and after that they are doing like a deployment. Who is the responsibility of that particular uh, UAT uh, uh, testing that uh, they're just uh, removing all the bugs and everything. They just once they see uh, each and everything. After that, they're doing like a uh, uh, particular uh, sign-ups and everything. All the stakeholders also con uh, comes to one conclusion on that particular software. So then ready to go to that live. Okay. And they just do that sign-ups and everything of that particular UAT process. Okay. Then uh, they do the deployment, guys. So this is the process of that UAT. Okay. So the next one is a, what is a project closure document and what points should be included here? Okay. So actually, uh, that uh, now here again. So this is that. Uh, this is a one of the particular project closure document we are giving. This is a one of the template. Uh, now here I can see the particular. Uh, and so uh, do that sign off and who the client signed off and that UAT testing, okay? Whatever the things will be there, right? We just do the sign offs and everything, date of sign off and particular that resources also uh, sign off from the uh, beginning to that ending, okay? From the uh, project starting to that ending, whatever that uh, all those, uh, whatever we are doing, right? Development testing for the uh, responsible and everything, the persons also do that sign offs and each and everything we are need to prepare the papers and everything, guys. Okay, here also we have mentioned that the uh, names and uh, is uh, but here we do that signatures and everything also, guys. Okay, the project is uh, uh, written on was like six months and it should. So here you can see that all infrastructure finding overall project information. Okay, each and everything yeah. also we need to mention. Yeah. Guys, please mute yourself. Yeah. Once the yeah. session is completed, I will. Last one. Awesome.
Guys, I already told you, right? I am recording that session. Okay, fine. So this is the uh, particular uh, format, guys. You need to prepare that a uh, project closer document and that reference links also we need to provide here. Okay. So this is the thing you need to prepare the project closer document. What will be included means here also we are giving some things. So the project overview achievements and lessons are learned, whatever the quality assurance. So do that side of and everything. It, it will be from the starting to that ending or uh, risk and management challenges. All those things we need to mention in that particular uh, uh, here. Okay. We just need to prepare all those things. And uh, here we do that sign offs and everything. And that reference links also we are providing here, guys. That reference links. So this is a project closer document for the project. Okay. So guys, uh, this is the caption uh, prep fund part three. And the total uh, uh, prep fund part one, part two, part three is a completed, guys. This is total nothing but a waterfall project. Okay. So the three parts is successfully completed here. Uh, just a second, I will stop my recording.